Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to be talking about amortization. So what that means is the debt retired in a given length of time by equal periodic payments that include compound interest. So essentially it's just the present value that we've been doing um, every month or every so often you're going to make a payment in, your payment's always going to be the same thing. Now what we haven't discussed is each payment, part of your payment goes towards interest and part of your payment goes towards actually paying off your balance. Alright, so that's what we're going to look into more with this table. So let's look at example 8. V buys a new MacBook for $1500. She agrees to finance the purchase for six months at 11.2% annual interest compounded monthly with approximately equal payments at the end of each month. Complete the amortization table below. All right, so here's what the table looks like. We have the payment number and keep in mind zero. That's where we're gonna start. That's just actually getting the loan we're not going to be doing most of these for zero, but it's just a nice way to know where we started. All right. We're going to have the balance at the start of the month, the amount of the payment, the interest part of that payment, the principal part of that payment, and the balance after the payment. All right. So what that means is each payment, some of that money is going towards interest, and then some of that money is actually going towards paying off your balance. All right, so first things first though, we still have to go ahead and use our calculator to figure out the first part. So we need to know the amount of the payment. So it's gonna be just like the other examples. We're just gonna get those five variables. So N, in this case, is gonna be number of compounds. So monthly is 12 times the number of years. So in this case, it's just six months. So since it's in months, how many years is that? Well, that's six out of 12. All right, I percent would be 11.2 divided by the number of compounding, so 12. The present value is 1,500. The payment is what we want to know, and the future value is zero, because we want to end with zero. All right, so if we go over to our calculator, and we start to plug all this stuff in. So our n was 12 times 6 over 12. Our I percent was 11.2 divided by 12. Our PV was 1500. Payment we don't know. FV is always zero. So we click solve for the payment. All right. Now in this case, we got the payment was 258.20. All right, that was online. Now if we did it on the calculator, we would have gotten 258.23. All right, now if you use the one from online, that's perfectly fine. You will just end up with a little bit of error like we've talked about before. But for the sake of this example, so I can show you exactly what this is truly doing, I'm going to go ahead and use the one from the calculator. That way it's just a little bit more accurate. Okay, so what we do with that payment is we're actually going to put 258 23 in all six of the payment slots. Okay. 
because every single month we're paying that same amount. All right, now remember, the start, that's where we had our actual initial loan. So we're gonna put 1500 over here. And again, we're not gonna touch any of these. I'm just gonna use these as labels to kind of show you what we're doing for each column. So for the amount of payment column, that was us using TVM. All right, let's look at the other columns. So if we go into the first payment, so our balance would still be 1500. So that's going to equal the previous balance. All right. Now the interest due. So let's talk about the interest. So just like whenever we're doing the balance sheet, since we're actually going to be using the numbers in the calculator ourselves, we're actually going to need to go ahead and convert that percentage to a decimal. So it was 0.112, that's 11.2%, and that was compounded monthly, so it's over 12. All right. Now, if you put this in your calculator, you would get that it's 0 0.00933, blah, 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 blah. All right, now the thing is, for these, in order to be as accurate as possible, we're actually not going to put it as the decimal at all. We're just going to use this in order to calculate interest. All right, so for the interest due, at the end of the month. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the balance and we're going to multiply it by the 0 0.112 over 12. All right. So, for this first one, it would be 1500 times 0.112 over 12. All right, that's what you actually put in your calculator. Now, when you do that and put that in your calculator, you should get $14. All right, so what that means is out of our $258.23, $14 of it is going straight to interest. All right, it just disappears. The rest of it is going to go towards actually paying off our balance. So in order to calculate that part, we just take how much our payment was, and that was the $258.23, and we're going to subtract how much interest was on there. All right, so this is the payment minus the interest. All right, so if we subtract those two, we are going to get $244.23. And 23 cents. All right, so that's what's actually going towards paying off of our balance. All right, so for the balance after the payment, all we're going to do is take the balance at the start and subtract the principal due. So essentially we're taking the balance at the start of the month and subtracting this column, which for our case means the 1500 minus the 244.23.
All right. So if we take the 1500 and subtract 244.23, we are going to get $1,255.77. All right, so that's one row. You've seen everything that we have to do. We're just going to have to do it over and over and over. And in this case, six times. All right, so let's go ahead and go to row two. So remember, the balance of the start num at the month is just the same as the previous balance. So the 1255.77. In order to get the interest due, we take that balance and we're going to multiply it by that 0.112 over 12. All right. When you do that, you should end up with 1172. And remember, during this whole process, we're going to be rounding to the nearest cent because we're talking about money. All right, next, we take the amount of the payment and subtract the interest due. When we take the 258.23 and subtract 11.72, we're going to get 246.51. All right, and then to get our balance after the payment, we're going to take our balance and subtract that principal due that we just found. So when we subtract those two numbers, we end up with $1,009.26. Then we do it again. So balance of the start is the same as the balance at the end, so $1,009.26. The interest due is going to be that balance times 0 0.112 over 12. If you put that in your calculator, that's going to come out to $9.42. Then we're going to subtract these two numbers. That's going to give us 248.81. And then we're going to take the balance minus the principal due, and that's going to give us $760.45. That's what goes in our last column. All right, next one. Balance the start, same as the balance at the end. For our interest, we take that number times the 0 0.112 over 12. Put that in your calculator, and you should get 710. Subtract the 710 from the 258, and that's going to get you 251.13. And lastly, we're going to take the balance of the start minus that principal due, and we're going to get 509.32. Alright guys, stick with me just a little bit more. So 509.32 comes down. 
we're going to take that number, multiply it by the point 112 over 12, put that in your calculator, and you're going to end up with 475. Subtract the 475 from the 258.23 and you get 253.48 and then subtract the 253.48 from the 509.32 that's going to get us 255.84 All right, last one. Balance comes down. We take that number and multiply it by the point 112 over 12. Put that in your calculator and you'll end up with 239. Subtract the 239. We're going to have 258. Sorry, 255. <laughs> 84. And then subtract the first number minus the 255.84 and we get zero. All right, now that part's really important. We got zero because remember back when we said that our future value was zero? Because at the end we should have it completely paid off. Well, that's what happened here. We got a zero because we completely paid it off, right? Now, keep in mind, if you had used the online calculator payment, this number wouldn't have been zero. All right, so while in real life with real numbers, yes, that number would in fact be zero by the end. For these tables, since we're rounding and things like that, it's not uncommon for it to be a few cents off either way, or if we're using this online calculator, maybe even more than just a few cents off. So don't worry about it if it's not zero. However, it should at least be fairly close to zero. Right? And that is it for these tables.